my, oops, my camera got bumped. Here's my face camera again. I'm uh, live a little bit later than I usually go today, but I spent my day doing other more productive stuff and then uh, just decided to stream this evening. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna turn my ring light on. I've got one of those little ring light um, webcams, but I sometimes forget to turn off the actual light or turn on the actual light part. Anyway, uh, yeah, today I'm just going to be painting some stuff. It's the same little fairy houses that I started last time on stream. Um, there's this one that, um, I started painting and then adding this like mossy texture to it or color. And this one I also painted entirely last time on stream. And did I make it to the post office? Revival Jan asks in the chat. Yes, I did. I sent my orders today. I did get snowed in a little bit this week and I couldn't go to the post office um, for the beginning of this week, but I finally got out of the house today. So that was pretty nice. Um, in the chat, we've got Rainfish, Technicolon, Artful Jackalope, Revival Jan, Rabbit, uh, Zippity Zoop, and I'm sure others are trickling in, but hello everybody. I relaxed some of the uh, chat restrictions a little bit. We're now down to like a 10 minute wait time for people who are new and would like to join in on the chat. So that's gonna continue to, that'll disappear next time whenever I feel like we're ready to completely eliminate it. So thanks for being patient if you have to wait to chat with us and you actually hang out long enough. <laughs> hey, Jonathan boy. This is another little project that I've been working on over the last few days. Uh, after my stream yesterday, I got back to work on this, and it is a, an embroidery piece that I've added a bunch of beads to now, but the idea is just to create this like organic mossy kind of texture. Um, and so I think it looks pretty cool with the beads. I want to add more variety and stuff to it, but that's something that is... Another recent craft I wanted to share. I'm gonna turn down the heat in here a little bit because it's warm. Which is certainly preferable to how cold it's been recently. <sighs> okay. Anyway, uh, getting started on my paint job here, um, there's quite a bit that I wanna add to this. I decided that I liked the white trim and kind of wanted to keep it. Um, but I also want to paint enough detail onto it to make it look, to give it some like shadows and reflection. Um, otherwise I need to add some mossy texture and color to this. And one thing that I forgot about last time was that I have a variety of cool looking like color shift glazes. Uh, these are more plaid products. Um, I am sponsored by plaid as part of their, uh, crafting ambassador program. Um, so they send me products, but these are actually really, really neat. I am always excited to play with new exciting things, especially for the fairy houses. And so these are top coats that are like translucent, but it's so like instead of a clear coat, it has a shimmer to it. And so it has a little bit of, um, a little bit of color and some reflectiveness and some of them have glitter in them. Uh, so I've got that as well for our fairy house. Um, I need to start with, I'm going to probably go, through, go around all those shingles and uh, add some shadows there. And I also need to choose a brick color. So let's do that. What if the bricks were like a dark teal? That kind of goes with my, uh, ridiculous color choices so far in here. And I will swap back over to uh, overhead view camera. There you go. So you can focus more on what's happening here. Got some palettes in my brush basin. These are all plaid products, but uh, very useful ones that I enjoy. So this color is grotto. It's kind of a teal kind of green. Dang it, this fly, I could not get him out of here. I looked for my electric fly swatter and couldn't find that either, so there might be a fly that uh, visits periodically. <laughs> Oreo Mega says, uh, you like my shirt? Thank you. It's, uh, 
Roy Casson, I think. It's one of the actual, like, um, I believe it's a Japanese brand. I could be wrong. But I found it here in the U.S., which is really nice and convenient. Anyway, tonight's going to be a bit of a chill stream since I've already expended a lot of my energy today doing other more useful things. <laughs> um, dang it. I'm like so annoyed by this fly that I can't get out of here. I feel like during the winter time, bugs are trying harder to get indoors. No, let's not make it the stream mascot. <laughs> How am I doing? Asks Jackie. I'm doing pretty well. I had a nice day today. I did a lot of... Dang it. I did a lot of general housekeeping, both online and in real life. Uh, did a lot of like literal cleanup around the house. Made myself a nice lunch. Did my packages to the post office. So, you know, I can't complain. Just getting work done. Yeah, I'm glad it was a productive day too. It was uh, much needed. I've been so focused on like streaming this week and just kind of like getting back into the groove of that that I had let a few other things fall to the wayside a little bit. So um, I caught up today and I no longer feel that pressure of like, oh, I should really clean up around here. <laughs> I'm gonna like, I got him. I actually got him. See? Okay, now I actually got him. I got him on stream. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to see that. <laughs> All right, and back to business. I got some paint on my hand for my trouble, but that's okay. He landed on my house, okay? That was fair game. I did my best to shoo him away and he insisted on being a part of this stream and a part of my project he landed on my house that was self-defense in texas if someone comes into your house you can you can do what you need to do <laughs> to protect yourself that's where i grew up at least it wasn't the silkworms hi the fly swatter <laughs> hi chickadee days Thanks guys. Thank you for supporting me in my fly extermination. He was invading my privacy bubble. He was an uninvited guest. Uh, Jay Sinner says, it looks adorable so far. Well, that makes me happy. So are those Twitch, are the links in the Nightbot command actually active because I'm trying to make that work. <laughs> Hi chickadee days, welcome. Sorry you had to see that. Sorry you had to tune in right into the, the violence. Oh, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. I hope you're doing better soon, but please make yourself comfortable if you can while you hang out with us. Hi, random bystander. Yeah, I'm not sure if I have hosts enabled. I used to not, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, my Twitch is under construction as I'm getting things together and also just figuring out the best settings and policies it's going to be. It's going to work for me. Okay. So there's, it's kind of dark compared to the rest of the house, but you know what? I will add a lighter color as a highlight. Oh, do I have any sponge brushes that I haven't already torn up? Let's find out. Because I could dab that with a little bit of a sponge and get some texture on it. It would be really nice. All I really have is these. That could still work. Okay. So this is a Dutch Aqua. Let's try that. 
Oh, thank you, random bystander here. I appreciate you checking it out. Alright, Puina, I'll check it out before my next stream. I'm always, I'm always tampering with the settings and adjusting things since I'm relatively new to being back on Twitch. I've really been streaming just for about a little over a week now. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's come and checked out my streams and been a part of that here. It's really nice to have you. So now I'm like dabbing the, uh, just dabbing over here, dabbing the chimney area with this sponge brush, but not actually painting consistently over all of it. And it's giving it some texture. So let me do that and then I'll hold it up and show you some more detail. I got a lot of uh, felting done last night too. I made several more mushrooms and just tweeted them out earlier. So if you wanna see more of our progress from yesterday, you can. Here's my chimney. Now with some texture done in a lighter color paint. So that's a good place to start. I'll keep working on that um, in terms of adding some highlight and shadow to what is here. And yeah, I'll try to save this sponge brush. <laughs> Uh, Rose Whiplash as they're digging the color choices. Thanks. This is the room where I grow fungi. I call it the mushroom. But um, thank you, Zippity Zoot, for that in the chat. All right, here's some paper towels to aid me in my painting. So I need to get a shadow color to use on the shingles around the house. Let's try this one. It's kind of warm. It's called mauve dust and it's a super like, it's like a warm gray. It's like a really light muted thing. Anyway, Master Fear, thanks for the sub. Oh, did my, I guess my new alerts didn't all transfer over. Let me check my alert box real quick. But thank you for subscribing. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to reload that. Okay. The brush basin over here has a variety of brushes to get us started. Hmm. All right, well, my alert box, uh, I tried to make some new subscription alerts, but for some reason, I did on my other PC and it's not showing up right now, so. Womp womp, I'll check it out before the next stream. But now, I am just taking my mauve dust. I should mix more water into this, actually. But I'm starting to apply it just as a shadow. Here we go around each individual shingle on this uh, rooftop. And the water is gonna help like feather it out a little bit. And I can also just like add any kind of shadow in general to this space. I 
Anyway, I've been enjoying a, a peaceful day around the house. Revival Jan gifted a sub to Random Bystander here. That's so kind. Thanks, Revival Jan and Random Bystander. I hope that you stick around and enjoy your sub and join us here in future streams. Yeah, it's been a pretty, a very relaxed day around my house. I was snowed in in the morning, but then I basically decided by the afternoon, the, the, the roads were looking a lot better by the afternoon, so. Um, I got a lot of stuff done around my house, I did laundry and dishes and you know, all of that kind of normal upkeep. And then, um, oh, random bystander was about to sub himself or themself. <laughs> That's nice. So Revival Jan just paid it forward. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Maybe you can start a chain. Anyway, just did uh, some chores around the house, took care of stuff that needed to be done, did some store business updates, tinkered with the Discord, you know. <laughs> oh, we do have a chain going. Random bystander here just gifted a sub to Zippity Zoot. Thank you. That's really, really cute and kind of you, both uh, for supporting the stream as well as um, gifting subs to others in the chat. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it is very, very wholesome. Hype train hype. That's right. Oh yeah. So I've been working with one of my emote artists on a hype emote and I did, um, I did suggest the, uh, fairy dust idea that had been discussed last time. And so I've seen a sketch so far of what they're working on and I think it's going to be really nice. Um, so new emote, new emotes are coming as I continue to slowly establish this channel. Yeah, I feel very lucky to have such a wholesome group of crafters around this corner of the internet. Um, once again, if you're new to this community and you haven't checked out our Discord, you should do that because it's a cool place where a lot of people post um, their arts, arts and crafts, especially anything that has like a kind of nature or fantasy theme, although it's not required to post art. It's more about just like enjoying creativity and discussing it. Hi, Ulith. They said, it's such a warm, relaxing stream. I feel like I'm just hanging out with friends when I'm here. I'm glad to hear that because that's what I, that's what I feel like, honestly. That's why I've been enjoying this so much, but also, you know, that's what I want to be able to, um, you know, that's the vibe that I want this to have. I want to be able to provide that or facilitate that at least. So thanks to everybody, uh, who, hangs out around these parts and, uh, you know, just provides that chill, wholesome energy. Random bystander says, um, they're not a crafter, but better at stuff like editing. Uh, but you support those who make crafts. That's nice. I mean, that's more than okay. You're welcome in our discord, even if you're not um, adding your own creations. I'm sure that all of the other artists also appreciate the moral support. But I've been really enjoying seeing um, the variety of different stuff that people have to, to post in there. And I've already learned quite a few things from um, other members, like just in terms of art and different techniques. Uh, Hardcore Fairy says, I wish I could be more crafty, but depression just said no to that, lol. 
I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, these fairy houses started out as depression art. <laughs> Therapy art is what I called it more. Because it's not about the depression, it's about how you're um, coping with it or how you're, you know, where you, where you put your energy. So I know that's very, very difficult to do when you're not feeling well, but um, I think that doing any type of um, project where you feel a little bit of satisfaction of um, progress and completion is a really uh, helpful thing to have when you're not doing well in the, you know, over a span of time. When you're depressed, any sort of um, small victory over uh, a minor craft or something that you can do in an afternoon is, it can go a long way, so. I've been celebrating my small victories for sure. Like doing my dishes and my laundry. Yes, it's, you know, everybody has to do it. It's not, it's not that it's uh, difficult or special, but going through the process of all of the different things involved in taking care of yourself is still something to celebrate. Small victories are still victories worth celebrating. I agree. Life is hard, you know? You just keep, keep trying and be kind to yourself so that you, uh, you can keep going. Yeah, you've been trying? That's good. Um, hardcore fairy. I assume that's how it's pronounced. HXC fairy. I've always known that as a hardcore abbreviation. Um, well, I wish you all the best luck, and I hope that this can be inspiring to you on some level. You can already see a difference between this side versus the other side. I'm not sure how apparent that is, but once there is way more additional detail layers and glazes, it'll, it'll really start to come together. Yeah, I've made more mushrooms. Uh, I need to do more photography for my site. That's a big one that's on my list of things to do. Yay, okay, Hardcore Fairy, I pronounced it right. I'm glad. It's because I had a bunch of punk friends when I was younger. <laughs> Alright, random bystander, enjoy your lurking. Yes, I do. I'm familiar with the lurk. Being a lurker myself most of the time. I have to pull myself out of my like lurker habits just to be a content creator as they call it. <laughs> Where it's like, all right, I guess I should post something now. But yeah. View with no chat? What do you mean? Lurker gang? Is it just because my chat is moving slowly? Oh my gosh! Zippity Zoot, who also just received a gift sub, gifted a sub to Jonathan Boy. So we've got a gift sub chain going. That's really kind. That's so cute, you guys. Giving each other subs. I love it. Oh, the definition of lurking is viewing with no chat. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I was like, what are you talking about? Is my chat broken? No, we're fine. 
<laughs> Thanks. Sorry, I didn't quite follow the thread of the conversation there. Oh, I made some candles earlier today. I had a variety of stuff that was like partially completed, but um, needed the final touches. So that was part of my general cleanup of like, oh, I should probably not let all these unfinished um, projects just be cluttering up my counters right now. So yeah, more photos for more new projects. Candles and mushroom pins come into the shop. <laughs> yeah, they're just passing the same sub around. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain though. <laughs> but yeah, I've been really enjoying the uh, chill Discord space a lot kept me motivated to stay crafting. Yesterday we finished um, the fairy light flowers as well as some um, mushies, mushrooms. Um, someone, Artful Jackalope, shared a pattern on the Discord for some crochet leaves. So that's something that I'm going to add to my fairy light flowers from yesterday is working on crocheting some leaves. Um, but it takes a little bit more concentration, so I feel like it's not as good of a streaming craft until I memorize the pattern and then I can just sit here and do it without constantly referring to my phone or whatever for the instructions. Alright, we're almost done with this side. A little bit of shingle shading. just getting lost in the details. This is usually the kind of craft I would be doing, you know, on my own time with no, no stream going. And I tend to just get like really meditative and into it, but hopefully I can get a sufficient amount of detail without totally uh, getting sucked in and forgetting to talk to you guys. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll do my best. Yeah, you like that texture boost from, you can see on one side compared to the other. Thank you. It's gonna get even more dramatic once I add the highlights, but yeah. All right, I'm just gonna keep working on this like side of the house so that I can kind of be a little bit systematic about it. We'll see how that goes. I used to not really enjoy painting, but I think that I needed to like slow it down and focus more on the details and let it take time instead of trying to rush things and then being like frustrated that it's not done. Um, Cause a good paint job does take time and it takes layers of building things up. Um, whereas I think, especially when I was younger, I just wanted to like slap a bunch of paint on it and like blend it all together in one layer and like call it done. When realistically, that's not, that's not the most calculated or best way to go about it. All right, so I just did that little side of the roof that kind of is on the same plane. And now let's move around doing this. I 
Most of these acrylic paints are very opaque unless you um, intentionally water it down with a lot of water or a lot of, uh, like you mix it with a translucent or transparent glaze and create a more transparent layer that will show some of the other paint underneath. But for the most part, acrylics are basically opaque, or they should be. Um, so you have to be kind of strategic about how you would want to build up color. I used to do a lot of oil painting. That was my original college major. I was a visual arts student back in the day. Um, do you guys want to see overhead cam or? I don't know. With these kinds of streams, I'm never sure if uh, people want to see every detail of the painting or if it's, you know, just more about chilling and hanging out. Uh, which I guess is it's, it's both, but <laughs> yeah. I so I originally studied visual arts when I was brand new in my early college days. Uh, studied oil painting for a while. Uh, I was just. I guess in a more, I don't know, I, I like eventually left college after the first two years and took a break and came back and then I did theatrical design. So it was like a weird transition period in my life where I wasn't, um, I don't know, probably just wasn't like ready to be fully dedicated to that and certainly not to painting. So um, I wish I had learned even more. and spent more time when I was younger and had more access to those resources, I guess, where I was painting more. I wish I tried harder at it, invested myself more in it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You prefer the overhead cam? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Well, then we can just keep it where it is. Yeah, I feel like I didn't really... At this point in my life, I've spent more of my, probably put more hours into like painting objects than I have into like painting images, if that makes sense. Like instead of sitting down and like drawing a character or something, um, I have more experience painting little houses or whatever. So. Oh my gosh, there's another fly! I didn't, I missed him because I um, didn't want to slap my paint palette that I had sitting over there. There's another fly down here and I'm angry. I'm not that angry, but I'm gonna have to take care of it. <laughs> Oops. Oh, thank you. Revival Jan just gifted another, another sub to Ulith. That was very kind of you. Yeah, that does add a lot of texture, detail. Um, so now as my third and final side, this is where most of the roof pieces are on this side. Put the paint in painter. <laughs> Only if you're a fly invading my workspace. I guess this is probably a decent view if you can see the overhead and you can see it in the face cam a little bit. So all right, I'm glad that this is working out. Hmm. 
<laughs> I've got a taste of cold blooded fly murdering and I can't stop, says Puina. I hope not. I don't want to spend all my time on this. I do think it's something about the winter time because I've had more flies recently. I've been, I've got some bug stuff. Um, that was a while ago though. I'll spray my bug spray down here and vanquish them once and for all. I wish that Ares would chase literally anything. Uh, I mean, well, he plays with his toys, but he doesn't like try to defend the house from bugs or anything. <laughs> he sometimes gets interested in them, but then he just sits there and he has no skills. He can't actually defend us from anything. He can't catch anything. He's a baby. Probably because he's so fat and lazy. Our wimpy ruler, indeed. Indeed. Oh, I yeah, I've got my leg up on my... I brought a new stool down here for Aries. And he followed me down here earlier and actually did jump on it. Because before I had like a swivel stool, I think that's why he wouldn't jump on it. Because he knew it would like swivel under his weight if he jumped. So I've replaced the swivel stool with a now a dedicated wooden Aries stool. And earlier today when I was not streaming, I saw him using it. So I have high hopes for that to potentially carry over into street stream times. Although at this hour, he's probably just gonna stay in our bed until further notice. Oh, hi Link fan, welcome. Nice to see you here. <laughs> yeah. He's been keeping me nice and cozy while it's extra cold outside. I do appreciate him for that. Yeah, I've been working on a schedule. I know that I've been streaming it in consistent times. So up until now, I've had the goal of like, all right, stream at least once every day, do something. And then I think I'm gonna amp that up to streaming at specific times. I'm mostly just like fighting against my own, um, you know, nature and habits and trying to create consistency. So I need to just like commit to that. But um, still figuring out what the what the best schedule for me is. I do like morning streams though. Well, I don't even know if you would call them morning streams. They tend to happen early in my day. <laughs> so I think of them as being morning streams, even if they're more like an afternoon stream. Plus I'm on the West Coast, so I think morning for me is afternoon already for a lot of people. But yeah. Right now it's 12 a.m. where you are. It is 9 p.m. where I am. Which is a lot later than my usual stream time. But that's okay. We're just gonna have a nice chill evening together so I can get some of this done. And then, who knows. I feel like if, I, if I'm streaming at the same time or around the same time every day, that would probably help people be able to tune in consistently or know when to expect it. So that's what's on my mind. Like, all right, I could probably do better <laughs> in just picking a time and then doing my best to stick with it. I guess I'm like hesitant to say I will be streaming at X o'clock and then end up unable to stick to that. So I'm like hesitant to make that kind of statement yet, but give me some time. You should get some sleep, uh, zippity-zoot. 
Sleep is not for the weak. It is necessary for life. It's delicious. done with this section of shingle work. I still have to do the cone and this back panel. Time for cone roof painting. That's right, I did stream before eating so that I would not get hungry this time. <laughs> I need to do a better job of that when I do my daytime streams because I I'll feel like I'm always like, all right, lunchtime, gotta go. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yes, Puina just joined, uh, Puina just shared the Discord and Random Bystander just joined. Thank you. Um, that is our Discord community where people post crafts all day. Um, so I definitely encourage you to join if you like watching these streams and the kind of vibe that we've got going on here. I do my best to carry that over to the Discord and give everybody a place to get to know each other kind of based on those common interests. I really need to join another knitting circle like in person up here. I think tomorrow is going to be my knitting night, FYI. So if you guys want a Friday night knitting night, well, I don't know if it'll be a night, but I keep calling it knitting night because of the alliteration. Where we just get together with our hooks and needles and knit and or crochet to your heart's content. I think I had, I was briefly like, attending a knitting circle last year um, then I fell out of habit and moved away from where they meet like to where it just got to be a little bit too inconvenient and so now I need to I need to get out of my house and go find another one because that was really wholesome um, it was not all old ladies there were some younger people there too and they were boys there <laughs> but it was still mostly mostly ladies that's okay it was fun and I was not the youngest person there either I'll be although I think that some of the people there were other people's kids <laughs> but they were still knitting, so it counts. I definitely want to give this little fairy house a shimmery roof with one of those um, shiny finishes that I was showing off a little bit earlier.
Hi, cutest corgi knitting nights. Let's go. Hi, cutest corgi knitting miracle stream. Friday night knitting sounds good. All right. If I decide to do it in the evening, otherwise we'll just call it Friday day knitting. Well, for a lot of people who are not on the West Coast, it'll probably be evening even if it's not evening for me. So that will be my excuse for doing knitting night at any time of day. <laughs> Heads up, knitting night might be mid afternoon, but if you knit, then it doesn't matter where you are. We're all connected, <laughs> knitting together. Friday knitting. Friday day knitting. All right. Afternoon knit. Whatever. That's what we'll do tomorrow. So here's my official announcement. Tomorrow's knitting stream. Technically I crochet. I feel like knitting is more common or maybe it's like it's easier to alliterate with. So knitting night will technically be crochet day. <laughs> Why don't I just call it that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> So it's not technically night and I'm not technically knitting, but welcome to crochet day. <laughs> oh, it's so much easier. Why don't I just start with that? All right. It's crochet day. All right. We're nearly done working our way. I've got four out of six cone panels have been painted. <laughs> yes, the light bulb moment. When you realize the answer was just in front of you the whole time. <laughs> Call it something totally different. Hey now, I'm trying to be descriptive. I'm trying to give, let people know what they're signing up for, I guess. I don't know, when you come to this stream. When you come to my stream, you're going to get peer pressured into making something creative. It's not the worst thing that could happen. I think I'll use the same dusty mauve color to add a little bit of shadowy texture all over the house after I do the roof. Because it is for sure working for me. Hi, Great Heron says hello, friend. Welcome to stream chat. Zippity Zoo, you can tell your friends that it's actually crossword night, but I'm still gonna announce it as knitting night or crochet day. Welcome to crochet day. I should probably write this down. So we have the fairy house factory, which is just anytime I'm working on fairy houses. So those can be lumped together into a playlist on YouTube. Um, Fairy House Factory can happen any day of the week. Crochet Day should be a weekly event. Crochet Day turns into Knitting Night, that's right. Daytime to nighttime stream schedule. You know when they advertise like, oh, this is change your outfit from a day look to a night look. Just a little bit more dramatic, glamorous eye makeup. All right, cone is done, and now all I have is this remaining panel. And you can really see the difference now between the single panel that is just one solid color versus every other roof section has uh, shading on it. 
So yay, continue. Well, I'll thank you for the bits, uh, Yabindi, 100 bits, appreciate that. Excited to be done with this roof, and then we'll got a lot more shading to do on the rest of the house. <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't be too excited. But it's progress. anybody else out there is working on their own creative project don't forget to tell us what what you've got going on in the chat let us know what uh, what you're working on tonight do we have any knitting nights in our chat group right now Just drawing, says Rainfish. That still sounds nice. I need to get back into practice. I started doing um, sketches of clothing in order to just like kind of level up that skill for myself. Um, and I need to be more consistent. But it's one thing I've been drawing recently. Oh, Puina is always knitting during my streams. That makes me happy. Queena, I want to see what you're working on at some point. You should post it up. If you haven't already, maybe I missed it in the Discord, but I want to see your projects. Uh, Zippity Zoo drew a map for his fantasy novels yesterday and today worked on a new song. That's great. Some multimedia art over there. It's fun to be like working on different creative aspects of the same project. Like you said, doing a, a map for your fantasy world, like that's drawing on top of world building as a creative pursuit. Polishing a pipe of yours, it's worthy, <laughs> worthy cause. Nice, nice. We've got some writers, some DMs working on their campaigns. So you restarted a scarf for your mother-in-law, but you'll add it later to the crochet and knitting channel. Please do. I will enjoy checking out your progress on your scarf. Yeah, maybe I should just start with something like a scarf where it's like very simple and straightforward for a knitting stream because I'm just like I don't want to end up like glued to my instructions and be like okay what do I stitch next while I'm also trying to stream <laughs> so I think maybe something like a scarf would be good or I could just do some freeform crochet and show you all what goes into that at least when when I do it everybody does it differently that's a good idea. Okay, tomorrow I might just be doing freeform crochet and then you guys can see the chaos. It'll just be called chaos crocheting. <laughs> Welcome to the chaos of crochet day where I go in with no plan and do whatever I feel like until I decide that it's done. <laughs> Ever made something for Aries? No, he doesn't like wearing clothes. Well, I do have those little cat hair hats that I keep mentioning that I have yet to actually show that on stream. We'll do an Aries crafting with cat hair day too. 
Yeah, I need to be writing this stuff down. <laughs> I'll get there, don't worry. I've only been streaming for like a week and a half. Knit for chaos. Thread for the thread god. Yard for the yarn throne. I like this. I like where this is going. All right, I'm done with all of my tedious little shingle highlights, so that's good. Cat hair hats, yeah. Uh, you know, when you make a, a cat hat out of cat hair for your little cat, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's Cameo Blush. That's the same color as this. That's gonna be too, too bright. Do I have anything else or do I need to water it down? I need to mix it with some white. That's what I need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna make a lighter pink color. <laughs> Got a little, a little bottle fart sound there. And don't forget about the knitting nights. That is actually, now that you've said it, since you literally said it, I have commissioned a knitting nights emote. It's been a while, I need to ask for an update on that. But uh, yeah, knitting nights is totally my little attempt at an emote um, concept for our, well, needle nights actually is what I was calling it, needle nights. So that way it's like more inclusive because it can be any type of needle, whether it's a embroidery or regular sewing or knitting needles. Yeah, Crafting with Cat Hair is a really popular book. It goes viral every now and then. Well, people on the internet share about how, how ridiculous it looks to craft with cat hair, and yet it's also so fun. Did I like lose my paintbrush here? Because I had the, the spongy one. I think it, oh yeah. I accidentally flipped it off the table and it's killing one of those flies. <laughs> Okay, so back to my spongy brush here. I'm gonna take some of my super pale pink that I just started. Dab it on the palette so that it's not too strong on the, on the sponge. And then I'm gonna really lightly tap it over the shingle area so that this basically gets onto the edges only. This is our highlight. This is much faster than shading. So I will give you a detailed view of this too after I So you can really see what that did compared to the rest of it. So now this is three colors on every shingle compared to two on the rest of the house. All right, now time for a little bit more. Yeah, I got this blank. Um, Great Heron was asking, do I cast the house myself or make them get them blank? This one was blank. Um, I will take houses and repaint them if they already had a paint job that I didn't like. Or I will, um, I have a little collection of some totally blank ones. Like this one was originally just solid white. I'm pretty sure it came from a craft store someplace where it was, it was sold to be painted specifically by whoever bought it. So, so that's what I'm up to. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think I actually have like three, four, five, at least five more of this type that I can see within <laughs> within eyesight right now uh, where I'm sitting. Possibly more tucked away somewhere. But yeah, I was just buying them rapid fire fairy house collecting for a while. So I am kind of uh, being a little bit messy with this application where it's getting on things like the trim. That's why the trim gets painted last, so that that is where the cleanup happens pretty much. I also like the idea of it picking up some of these pink tones and then having the, the white um, just kind of sitting on top. Maybe? I don't know how to describe what I'm thinking of, but hopefully you'll be able to see it over time as I keep going. But yeah, I feel like I'm in a place in life where I just need to start saying yes to everything and stop being afraid of overly ambitious projects. For a while when I was struggling with other life stuff, I um, I really wasn't able to fully pursue like uh, ambitious art. Like I feel like I've been kind of operating at a, at a lower level than my full capacity, if that makes sense, for a while now. Like I haven't done something that is just like outright really challenging. I just stuck my finger straight in the part that I painted, but that's okay. Um, so what I mean by that is that I used to take on a lot more ambitious projects and try to do things that were like big and impressive more frequently than I do now. In fact, it's been so long since I've made a, like a super involved costume or whatever. It feels kind of foreign to me. And that's something I want to work my way back towards. Hey, Ines Mona, thank you for your sub. Um, and so I'm not saying that to disparage the work I'm doing now, like this is fine, um, but this is something that is, I'm not, I'm not working at full capacity necessarily. Um, stuff like sewing is a higher level skill for me anyway, not necessarily, but it's, I put more into my sewing work than I do into this type of project, um, in terms of concentration and, uh, having an ambitious end goal in mind. Um, that's not to say that painting is less difficult or anything. I'm just talking about from my own perspective and my, the types of projects that I'm doing. Um, my sewing work is more complicated than my fairy house work. Oh, Ines Mona says uh, they love the fairy houses and excited to see you process. Good. I'm glad. I've also got Nathan Tong uh, in the chat. Thank you. So yeah, um, one of the things that this, that streaming I feel like is, um, is helping me with is pushing me back towards becoming more ambitious over time. And so this is, uh, you know, part of it is just like me getting more used to talking to people, being, um, you know, in front of an audience when I'm working on stuff and chatting and, um, and so part of it is like, well, I can't choose something that's going to require like absolute concentration for me because I have to be able to, you know, talk and hang out while I'm working on stuff. But even so, I want to, I would like to work my way up to doing more ambitious projects again. So that's just, uh, you know, me putting that out into the world for myself. Um, in that I, I want that. I want it. Now these are two different ones. They're very, very close in color. I think this one is Morning Mist versus Mauve Dust. They're both plaid products under different brands. Folk Art and Deco Art are both plaid products. But um, which one is going to make a better shadow for the purple? It's probably this one. So there we go. I just made my decision out loud. Okay, I think that once you are looking at them on the palette, you can see a little bit more difference where this one's more brown and this one has like 
slightly more purple to it. I don't know. They're pretty similar, but technically not the same. So let's use this to start shading in the purple areas of the house. So yeah, that's a, once again, just me stating my intention to the universe, largely for my own benefit, is that I am on my way to creating bigger and better art projects, but that doesn't necessarily happen over time. And the practice that I get from being consistent with smaller projects is going to aid me on my way. So that's what, that's what we're up to here. That's what I'm up to is that I will take this, um, the experiences that I get from streaming. Oh, thank you, uh, Emil Dean Shepherd. Thank you for this sub. So Innis Mona is asking, where did I get this brush holder slash water container? I've been slumming it with the old cup and paper towels life. I totally know what you mean. Um, I did that forever. So this was sent to me by Plaid. I'm a Plaid ambassador. A Plaid ambassador, I can't even talk. But uh, I have, um, a lot of these plaid products were sent to me for promotional use, and so I have to uh, always add that disclaimer. That said, this is one of the products that they sent me in the package that I saw it and was like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll use that. But then when I actually started using it, I, it like changed everything, and I was like, holy crap, I had no idea that this would end up being such a useful product and that I'm actually obsessed with how just functional it is. Because you've got like separate containers and it holds your brushes like with the bristles out of or off of the surface so that they're not getting crushed. I'm happy with it. I'm loving it. It ended up being um, the most unexpectedly enjoyable product out of that box. So it's now the kind of thing that I would buy if I didn't have one because now I understand how useful it is. You love the brand name Plaid? Yeah, they, they're a long time company. I don't know how else you'd describe it. I've been using Plaid paints since I was a little kid. And so when they opened up their ambassador program and invited me to it, I was so stoked because I was just like, yes, of course, uh, you know, it's so nice to genuinely get endorsed, to be able to endorse products that you genuinely use and have been using for years, as opposed to just like, trying out a new product because the company wants to work with you or whatever. Um, but I feel like Plaid is one of the most absolutely helpful. Um, you know, this, these products are things that I already owned a lot of them and then ended up getting more uh, to show off on stream and such. And I, I'm very grateful for that because I genuinely love them and use them. What do I think of that as a shadow color? Do I want to add more purple to it, perhaps? This is pretty subtle. I don't know if you can really get the full impression from the stream. So I'm mostly talking to myself when I ask these questions out loud. Yeah, and these kinds of um, acrylic paints are very, very cheap and affordable too. So it's like, I like to also be using and endorsing products that are affordable and available to people instead of being like, oh, you should use whatever, um, you know, high end expensive product that's like a specialty thing. Like, of course, not everybody has time for that or money for that or, you know, is going to invest in that. But these plaid paints, man, these are like a couple dollars a piece, maybe Some of them are like a dollar. Find them on the right sale day is great. Anyway, good stuff. I like working with companies that I actually like, including Platt. And their brush basin is awesome. The end. <laughs>
So now I'm just taking my shadow color, and yeah, I am going to keep this and not try to mess with it right now. Taking my shadow color and just kind of running my brush lightly along all of the indentions that make up the the siding of a house, I guess you could say. I believe that's the term. Um, Gray Heron is asking, would a mini sewing machine off Amazon, like a $30 one or so, be sufficient for making small crafts like ornaments or cat toys or something? Maybe. I mean, I know that some of the, some of the machines that are sold, um, that are like mini sewing machines that are advertised for on the go sewing and stuff. I don't know that I would really fully recommend that because I feel like it might not be, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? I feel like you could spend that same amount of money on a used machine that would do more for you, if that makes sense. I, so some of those machines are not high quality and so I don't want to like uh, universally endorse them. I do think that for doing small things like uh, ornaments and cat toys or plushies, you don't need a fancy machine. I'm not trying to say that, but um, I don't necessarily recommend getting the like bottom of the line whatever in general, um, because a lot of the time that those products are aimed at like children or they're not actually very functional and they're like kind of gimmicky based on like being extra small or whatever. So. Um, I definitely think that you don't need to have a certain brand, you don't need to have a certain uh, fancy, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It doesn't need to have a bunch of fancy stitches available or anything like that. Really the most basic machine is going to enable you to make those types of little crafts. You don't need anything um, that has like a specific uh, stitch type or ability, like your, your kind of like entry level machine will be sufficient. Um, so <laughs> your, my plaid overlords will be pleased that, um, Innis Mona just bought a brush basin or is going to get one. I'm glad. <laughs> Great Heron said, it'd be better to buy a secondhand singer than a, uh, I don't know what you're referring to, but yeah, more of like a, an off brand or a cheaper version of the thing. And I agree with that. Yeah. I would rather get a secondhand old ass metal sewing machine that has like no features and can just do like straight stitch and zigzag forward reverse. That's, that's like what I learned on. And so I am a big uh, proponent of like not needing something that's specialty or high end. I just think that a lot of the like the very, very cheapest options on Amazon are like probably not even worth the money. And if you're willing to look around a little bit more, you can get something, um, that will do a lot more for you and be sturdier through the years. And it doesn't have to be a brand new fancy thing. Um, as long as an old machine is serviced and like functioning, um, a lot of the metal ones will last forever. So I mostly have older machines. I recently, I switched over to a machine that I won in a cosplay contest. Uh, so I have a, I have a couple of industrial machines that you can see behind me that have mostly become tables for other crafts. Jeez, I need to get back to sewing. But, um, Aside from the like high end specialty machines that I've like specifically invested in because I wanted to do more complex and um, things as a seamstress, etc. Aside from those, I own like only old machines. And then I eventually won one in a cosplay contest that was brand new and was like, all right, well, this is my machine, my more recent machine now that has like a variety of stitches and stuff can actually do other things besides just forward, reverse, and zigzag. But that was how I learned. I learned on a vintage machine that could only do forward, reverse, and zigzag. And it had no like specialty features for sewing buttonholes or invisible zippers or anything that was like 
um, an add-on, I did not have it. And it actually was wonderful for learning because I had to learn to do every single thing manually. There's no helper feat that's going to like magically make the process that much faster and easier when you're using a sewing machine that's older than you are. So I think that in terms of my abilities, that was a good move because then I ended up kind of challenging myself to learn to be a better sewist. Um, and so that's kind of my background and why I feel like, oh, don't bother getting, it doesn't have to be specific or fancy. It just, you just got to put some hours in on something that will work. <laughs> that was a really long explanation of get whatever sewing machine you want. Just probably not like the very bottom of the barrel on Amazon or whatever, because it might not, that might not function. <laughs> you just BS the name. Yes. Uh, talking about your chat comment of some sort of off-brand gear, yeah. This song. <laughs> Sewist, they don't call it a seamstress anymore, asks we Wraith Knight. Uh, a lot of people still use the term sewist, I'm sorry, seamstress. I started trying to remember to say sewist more often because it's gender inclusive. So, um, seamstress, it, it, you know, waitress, it's like a feminine kind of suffix on it. Um, whereas a lot of men and non-binary people, so, and so, um, over time, I've tried to learn to replace that word in my vocabulary with just saying sewist more often because I think it refers to anybody who sews instead of like assuming that there has to be a gender tied to it. And I think it's weird that seamstress as a word has survived in, you know, like the general population of, um, you know, our general vocabulary, seamstress has survived a lot longer than a lot of other gendered words. And I feel like it's because sewing is considered a gendered skill by a lot of people, but not always. So that, yeah, that's why I use the word sewist. And if you are a sewist that does not conform or does not identify as female, then, um, Maybe you can also pick up that word if that's more comfortable. But yeah, I've just started saying that more generally when talking to the public. Obviously, like if it's, if I'm talking to another girl, then I'm a seamstress, you're a seamstress. Okay, cool. But the, when it's more of a general statement about people who sew, I feel like sewist is a just more inclusive term overall. This song, <laughs> the Naruto song. <sighs> Great Heron says, I prefer textile or thread wrangler and clockmonger myself. You know, that makes sense. Sewmeister, also acceptable. So thank you all for offering up your own suggestions for gender inclusive terms that we could start using instead of seamstress. <laughs> Okay, there's two sides of the siding done. Ah, pastel house is looking pretty though. All right, I guess I'll just continue on to around the corner. Thread Wrangler is A plus, I agree. I'll change my Twitter bio to that. I'm a Thread Wrangler now. We gotta get these gossamer dogies up the cross stitch by high noon, I reckon. I like that. Thank you, Great Heron, for giving me a chance to practice my fake southern accent, even though I'm an actual southerner. Cutest Corgi says this is looking good. Thank you. 
Revival Jane wants to live in this house. Well, it's all yours. Once it's on my store, you can buy it for yourself. Anis Mona says they really like the blue fireplace because it pops and gives it that fantasy feel. Thank you. I agree. I wanted to avoid using like standard brick or wood colors for this one. I definitely do that for some of my fairy houses, but I wanted some, some variety. Some witch shrink me down, says Jan, I'm moving in. All right. I just need to one, find one of those shrinking potions. <laughs> oh, cutest Corgi, good luck on your boss fight. That sounds like a worthy, uh, a worthy goal to spend your time on. Is this Homestuck music? I don't know, I don't think so. Beware the forest mushrooms. It's a, it's a forest maze, yes. This is DJ Cutman, as always. If you're curious about the music, there's a link directly to the music stream that's down in the info box below. Basically, this is a 24 hour live streaming music channel run by DJ Cutman. It's called Radio Cutman. And uh, it has some really good jams. So I've been listening to this consistently for like all of my uh, streaming, pretty much all of my streams from the beginning. Oh yeah, Super Mario RPG, that's where we're at. But yeah, there's a lot of really good video game music on this channel. It's all remixes, um, some anime stuff, and just general fun lo-fi beats. Perfect for crafting. This is DJ Grumble, who is another one of my favorite musicians that's on this channel quite a bit. Whenever a DJ Grumble song comes on, I'm just like, yeah, it's my boy Grumble. Do I name my houses slash creations? No. Uh, well, I, uh, I number them. That's what I've been doing so far, because I have so many. It would just... It would just be endless and I would come up with like really bullshit names eventually. I would just like run out of words. I'd just repeat everything. So that's why um, I tend to number them or I'll say like what kind it is. Like this is the fairy church. This is the fairy house. Fairy house number nine. Pancake house. No, this is not a pancake house. Maybe I'll make a fairy pancake house at some point. Yeah, the more I make of these, the more opportunities there'll be to get silly with it, I think. So maybe I will eventually be doing like crazy themed houses that just have like different <laughs> stupid stuff on the outside. I don't know. We'll see where we go for here. Uh, Ines Mono is asking, where do I find the bases for the houses uh, where you live? The thrift shops aren't great. Um, sometimes craft stores will have them. Like this one was sold blank in order to be painted. Uh, this is what the others of the set look like. See, this one says crafts on it. I don't know if you can see that, it's, but it's like designed to be a craft store. There's an outside staircase. It says craft store across the top here. So there's one. Um, hold on. This one is a cathedral, a county, country cathedral. And it actually has an additional part. It's like shrink wrapped, but there's a, another part that you 
um, attached to the top that's inside after I unwrap it. So here's a cathedral. What else is over here? This one is the drugstore, and once again, it says so. And so if I want to change that element of the design, I would have to find a way to cover it up and say whatever other kind of store. So maybe that would actually be a fun opportunity to get more creative with it and try to determine what kind of, uh, what do the fairies use this one for kind of thing. Oh, it's fine that you have questions. I mean, you give me things to talk about, so I'm happy to chat with you. If I really wanted to sit in silence and not answer questions, then I would just do this without streaming which is what I used to do. So we finished that side and we're on to the final side. Don't they have unlimited pancakes at IHOP? I don't know. <laughs> Why is this the conversation that we're having? I mean, it's fine. You can talk about what you want. But there's just like a persistent pancake convo happening here. I don't know what triggered it. <laughs> forced sociability. Yeah, just in terms of streaming in general, it's like, well, I gotta force myself to interact with other humans today, but hey, it's been going great. Oh, Ines Mona is saying it'd be a cute idea to spin the drugstore into an apothecary. That is a great idea. I'll just have to, like, create a sign and, like, attach it to the house itself. Since those letters are raised up, I'll just replace them with something else. But that's a great idea. I really like that idea. Thank you, Ines Mona is already providing really great suggestions here for future fairy houses. So currently I've been doing most of this kind of craft on stream. I guess I'm debating like if you were to turn tune in regularly to fairy house streams, those of you who came here last time um, or who plan to be here again for additional fairy house streams, my question for you is would you prefer to see me consistently working on the same fairy house from start to finish? Like this one was blank when I started painting it on stream and so you could potentially sit and watch me go from start to finish doing this complete house if I keep my consistency up and stream all of it. So my question is, would you rather see that or would you rather tune in and be like, oh, okay, well, I finished that other one. Here's a new one that I'm working on. Or does it matter? Is it more just about hanging out and checking it out? Because these are the things I like to think about. Revival Jan likes to see it start to finish. Okay, good to know. Zippity Zoot doesn't care. Oh, okay, so it seems like there's quite a few people saying that they like to see things start to finish in general. That answers my question, perfect. So um, if I decide to keep working on like, oh, I need to spend more hours painting than I end up streaming, then um, I will probably do like specific stream projects that are consistent that will go from start to finish. And then meanwhile, I'll have other fairy houses that don't necessarily get streamed at all. That's just like, surprise, here's another finished one because I did it in my own time or whatever. Well, thanks, Great Heron. I'm glad to see you here. I'm glad to have you here. New people are always exciting. Well, and you're new to Twitch as well. I hope that you find lots of fun creators that you enjoy. I've been spending more time watching other streams recently um, and just been more active as a viewer on Twitch as well. And I think that's it's given me good ideas um, and you kind of just get a feel for like how different people handle their communities and what different streaming environments are like. So yeah, I hope I can continue to develop this over time into something that people will enjoy alongside me. Oh, 
Oh, and it's Mona said they've been following for a while and just now kind of been more vocal and stuff. Well, I hope that you will share on the Discord. You said you're feeling shy, but that's okay. There's a lot of shy people in there, honestly. Um, I know this sounds cheesy, but like it's a safe space. Um, there's, you know, nobody makes fun of anything. That's part of the rules is don't make fun of people here. It's not what we're about. So, um, you're going to get positive comments on, on your work that you share. It's also not specifically a place for critique. Um, I think that a lot of people, well, not in the group and the group has been great and lovely. A lot of people on the internet at large, when you post your art, will offer you critique that you didn't want or ask for. And so I put that in the rules for the Discord to be like, look, this is not a place for critique. I should probably put that in the main opening section when you agree. Zippity Zoot says, yes, you agree. Oh, bye, Puina. <laughs> Puina says, be good, chat. We'll see you later, Puina. Thank you for hanging out and helping. Um, but yeah, uh, there's all, you know, if you're looking for critique on your work, then there's the best way to get that is in a environment where you're specifically asking for from it, from people who have educated opinions on the matter, uh, as opposed to just random criticism from anybody in drive by comments that can get really discouraging as an artist, regardless of what your art is. So. Uh, that's not the point of the discord and so people are not disparaging there and people are not going to be like oh you should have done this different or better or whatever because as artists you know we can potentially grow from critique but not all critiques not all critiques are necessary or valid and so i feel like there's a it's worth stating that for the benefit of others like i'm it's fine whatever i can people want to criticize my shit and go for it. But I want to make sure that other people feel comfortable there um, and not afraid to post out of fear of criticism because that is not what the group is about and that's not how you'll be received. So just a general heads up for anybody who might be considering wanting to post something but holding themselves back out of shyness or uncertainty, you should go for it. All right, I just did the shading around each of the main sections of the house. So the next thing that I wanna work on is adding more texture and depth to the moss. And I have a, a specific paints for that. The Grusinator, thank you for the sub. Appreciate it, welcome. Uh, Oh, you do pixel art, Ennis. That sounds awesome. I want to get into pixel art more so that I can do more emotes and things for um, the Discord channel. Yeah, we have barely any emotes in there. We gotta make, get step that up. Anyway, uh, so I have two different other paint. These are painted finishes. These are moss texture paints. So I have done a base coat of green on certain areas of the house that are going to look, that I want to look mossy. I'm going to do that with this texture paint. So this is chunky paint. <laughs> it has texture in it that is um, like a grit to it that is intended to add a raised surface to the paint itself. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful applying this than the last time. And it's going to build up the shape as well as the color. And I have two different finishes. I'm not sure that the texture will totally come across on camera, but at least you can see it in the bottle of being, it's got like sandy texture in it pretty much. And so we need a variety of moss shades. With painting, if you're not entirely sure where to go, it's a good idea to just layer up some similar colors and make sure that they're, do some splotchy,
areas and then um, that's a good way to start learning how to build up the highlight and shadow and texture. Just start with some color variations within the same family. Might need a smaller brush for some of this. I'm afraid to get into all the nooks and crannies and then this brush is too big. It's gonna end up hitting my other, my shingles or something. And so just like on previous houses that I've made, the paint is really like a base coat and it'll have actual like physical moss um, of a couple different types added for texture. So this is not the only thing that's gonna go into creating these moss spots, but it's where the moss starts. Is a little bit more texture, several layers of color that are kind of like overlapped or showing you the details um, of the variety. Okay. You're so, <laughs> the chunky paint, it's, okay, sorry, sorry. Let me do, I missed some chat questions. Uh, the grooves is loose, that's right. Uh, Oregon, you, you're from Oregon and you live in Washington now, that's nice. This is the chunky paint, looks like baby food. Yes, it does. Um, so Cutest Corgi is asking, did I go to art school? How did I, how do I know how to do um, depth and shading and such? Uh, I didn't go to art school specifically, but I studied art at a four-year university. Several different four-year universities. Well, two of them. Um, I talked about it a little bit earlier in this stream, but I, my original college major was painting. So yes, I have taken, I've taken a lot of painting classes in my life. Um, I don't have a degree. My degree is in, I do have a degree. I need to finish my sentences. My degree is in uh, theatrical design and technology. I have a BFA in theater, but specifically backstage theater work as opposed to being an actor. So my uh, actual degree is in everything to do with producing a theatrical performance besides performing. Um, and uh, I have extensive art training in general, but um, it's always been my passion and I've always wanted to just be able to create different things. And so I'm always working on something new, whether it's for sale or for a community like cosplay or just for me. more tree on this backside. Yes, I'm a theater techie. We've talked about that. The chunks of my chunky paint are like falling and then rolling onto the table. Cool. Stagger my Nightbot announcements a little bit more. <laughs> I'm gradually improving. Oh, 
always really liked this song. This mossy finished paint would be really good on like home decor crafts that you want to add a moss texture to. Um, which I guess this fits in that category, but I meant more like, I don't know, a table centerpiece or candle holder or whatever kind of like random little household item. If you wanted to give it a kind of like rustic foresty look, you could definitely use this kind of paint for that. I think some of the chunks, <laughs> the texture within the paint tends to sink, so you have to like shake it up and make sure you get some on your brush. But anyway, I've done my texture round with this. What are your favorite pizza toppings? Oh, I'm a pepperoni girl. I like to keep it pretty basic. Um, okay, I need to do some shading around the bottom. I've just added this green paint to like all sides though, and I feel like it's gonna take a little bit longer to dry than the rest of it. Oh, and it's also 10 p.m. Hmm. All right, do I wanna keep streaming? It's gonna go more into a late night stream, depending, well, I guess some of you are in different, different time zones. Maybe it's not late at night for you, but do I wanna keep streaming is the question. Well, let's see, what else we got going on here? Yeah, I'm afraid that I'm gonna stop, stick my hand into this. I'm probably gonna break after this. But here we go, this is the progress that I got done so far. It might not look dramatically different um, because we've just added a second coat on top of everything, but there's a lot more detail and texture and shading now. And uh, that's only gonna continue to become more pronounced as I keep going and adding more um, highlights and things, and then eventually, uh, like physical moss that'll be stuck onto it, and uh, some chunk that was too big, uh, and eventually cover it with actual moss and like miniature flowers and things like that. But this is our progress for tonight. Um, I'm gonna call it a night since it is after 10 and I like to go to bed early these days so I can get up early and be productive. Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me on my Fairy Factory craft night and I will be back tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's crochet day, we've decided during this stream. So um, stay tuned for announcements. You can either follow here on Twitch or on Twitter. I always tweet when I'm going live. So uh, I hope that I will see you all next time. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow for crocheting. And have a good night, everybody. Bye. See, we are scientists of sound. We're mathematically putting it down.